In these chilling images, Cambridge graduate Saskia Jones on the right shares a table with terrorist Usman Khan, who is out of prison on licence. They were attending an event to celebrate rehabilitation. 25-year-old Jack Merritt was there too. Both had supported Khan over many months. But minutes later, this ideological extremist emerged from the toilet, knives strapped to his arms, and murdered them both. Bravely, two former prisoners and a passerby confronted Khan as the fighting spilled out onto London Bridge, undoubtedly saving many lives. There's a very clear lesson here that the system as it's currently configured is not fit for purpose in terms of dealing with uh, prisoners like Khan, these extremely high-risk, dangerous prisoners. I don't know why, but they just took their eye off the ball and accepted what he said, and a narrative developed that he had changed. Clearly this was an active terrorist offender who had uh, not reduced his dangerousness or uh, um, abandoned his affiliation to uh, violent extremism for his entire journey through custody. So how did someone who'd recently been categorised as one of the most dangerous terrorist offenders in the country get to attend a rehabilitation event? Unsearched, wearing a fake suicide vest under a heavy coat, carrying knives. The answer lies in a series of catastrophic mistakes by those around him who thought he'd changed and left violent extremism behind. Khan's extremism was hardly a secret. He was a keen supporter of the Islamist group Al Mahajaroon. When he spoke to the BBC in 2008, his house had just been raided. I've been born and bred in England, in Stoke-on-Trent, in Cobridge, and all the older community knows me. And they will know you. If you ask them, they will know. Like these labels, what they're putting on, like terrorist, this, that. They will know. I, I, I know terrorist. That was the first of many lies. Four years later, he was convicted of terrorism offences. The inquest heard about intelligence suggesting that Khan was trying to radicalise his fellow prisoners. And even in February 2012, when he was sentenced, there was disturbing evidence that the prison where he would spend his time, Whitemore, already had a problem with Islamist gangs. Khan was in his element. He sought out notorious terrorists, including hook-handed Abu Hamza, and one of Fusilier Lee Rigby's killers too. He was in the top 70 most dangerous prisoners in the country. In December 2018, he was due for release on licence at the halfway point of his sentence. In advance of his release, a special committee called MAPA was set up to review his case. MAPA stands for Multi-Agency Public Protection Arrangements, and there were representatives from probation, the prison service, the police and MI5. A forensic psychologist assessed Khan. She was worried about his impending release and said prison had made him more dangerous, not less. I don't know why the prison service didn't take more notice, not only of the warnings from the psychologist, but also of the 2,000 pages they had uh, of intelligence and information about the eight years throughout which Khan had been a disruptive, violent and dangerous prisoner. He had remained as a high-risk Category A prisoner throughout his entire sentence. Yet in spite of his appalling prison record, at Whitemore, he was given the chance to join a prestigious education programme run by Cambridge University called Learning Together. Convicted criminals like Khan learned alongside Cambridge grads like Jack and Saskia. Learning Together is a theoretically informed, values-led educational initiative that brings together students from university and prison to study degree-level material with each other in the prison environment. Learning Together recognised Khan's apparent enthusiasm for the arts. He was given a laptop so he could continue his creative writing and poetry on release. But Khan was putting on an act. 
we don't feel he should have ever been allocated to learning together in Whitemore. Um, I think if you look at his eight years present prison record, he was, he was not even at the point where he was thinking about changing. Why, why would that ever make sense? Well, he, he was a poster boy uh, for learning together. He was involved in videos, he was involved in literature promoting it. It's quite grotesque in a way, looking back, seeing how much was made of, of this man, completely unquestioningly. Khan was released as planned and went to live in a bedsit in Stafford. His licence conditions meant he was regularly reviewed by the MAPA committee, but his probation officer was handling 40 cases. He had no experience of terrorism, and some police officers working with MAPA seemed out of their depth. It still is a local process involving local people um, who inevitably there will, not, there will not be the equality or depth of expertise across the country. Uh, in every probation area that's needed to deal with people like Khan. In November 2018, the Security Service MI5 received what should have been a crucial piece of intelligence, that Khan was planning an actual terror attack on release from prison. MI5 told the inquest it told the police about this, but that information was not shared with the committee monitoring Khan. If they'd got information that somebody was um, aspiring to commit a further attack after prison, would that same group then have said, do you know what, you can go to a learning together group in London and you can go unaccompanied and we've absolutely no problem with that at all. Again, it's inconceivable. I think it's a catastrophic system failure. I think one of the things that you know, we heard over and over again is I didn't think that was my role. Mm. And no real sort of professional curiosity, which is absolutely shocking to me. I kind of got the sense that people just pitched up for them, having not prepared, probably not even thought about what their actions were, and it was just a bit of a talking shop. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Almost a year later, Learning Together invited their star student, Usman Khan, to the celebratory event at Fishmongers Hall. Dr Amy Ludlow, the programme's founder and manager, told the inquest that she had seen no reason to do a risk assessment. There's no question in my mind, in law, that Learning Together as an organisation that employed people like um, Jack Merritt, that had uh, volunteers working for it or associated to it, like Saskia Jones, there was a direct duty of care. Ironically, what Learning Together seemed to have turned out to be was for Khan, was a protective factor in terms of him being investigated and, and, and managed properly. So it was almost like a... a, a it was a shield. It was like a shield because, you know, Cambridge University is a very prestigious institution. Learning Together was thought very highly of This CCTV shows him on the way to attack. A heavy coat hides a fake suicide vest. Allowed to travel alone, he'd duped virtually everyone. This mantra developed that uh, learning together was a protective factor for Khan. Um, but it was in the context of nobody really understanding what learning together was or what he was actually doing. People like me who've worked in prisons uh, you know, are attracted to the idea of redemption. But we should always also be very clear-eyed about some people and how they can manipulate the system to their own ends and how their dangerousness uh, means that actually national security and public protection come first. The inquest jury was clear. The state failed Saskia and Jack. The Ministry of Justice has set up a new national unit to assess the risk of releasing terrorist offenders. With many violent extremists due to be freed in coming years, it's not before time. Richard Watson, well, Newsnight asked the co-founders of Learning Together, Dr Amy Ludlow and Dr Ruth Armstrong, detailed questions about the work with Usman Khan and the events leading up to the murders of Jack Merritt and Saskia Jones. We received no reply.